Hi, I'm Dan from the Spark Music Academy and on today's Spark Music video, I'm going to be talking about the B-Bender and counting down my top five favorite B-Bender riffs in classic rock songs. So if you're new to my videos, I like to give a little bit of background information on the song and then do a little playthrough. So if you're into these types of videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when I post a new video. Well, let's dive right in. Now the B-Bender is probably most commonly associated with country music because it's often used to replicate the sound of pedal steel bends. But today I want to focus on the B-Bender in the rock world. For those unfamiliar with it, a B-Bender is a device that allows you to bend the B string up, usually by a whole tone, but you can also set it to do a half tone or in some cases a step and a half. There are several different designs. So this guitar uses levers and pulleys inside the guitar body that are activated by pushing the guitar neck with the guitar strap activating the pulling system and bending the B string. This system was first invented in 1968 by musicians Gene Parsons and Clarence White of the Birds. The story goes that Parsons was recording some leads and pushing the B string behind the nut to bend the string up while mentioning that he wished he had four hands so the technique would be easier. This is when White offered to push the string behind the nut while Parsons played. After the recording sessions, the two dreamed up the idea of a mechanism that could be housed within the guitar that could somehow pull the B string. White got to work and a few weeks later he had created the first prototype for the Parsons White Pull String. And thankfully, it was renamed to the B Bender. While a guitar equipped with this type of pulley system can be a bit pricey, other companies such as Hipshot have created add-on accessories that can achieve a similar effect. So I've added a Hipshot B-Bender to this guitar, which bends the B-string up a whole tone when it's pushed against the body. So it's not as smooth and it feels a bit more awkward, but it gets the job done. So we talked about the device itself, now let's take a look at my list. Starting the list at number 5, I'm going with the bridge riff from My Friend in Misery by Metallica. This is the second last song on Metallica's massive self-titled 1991 record, which saw the band moving away from their focus on thrash metal and experimenting a little bit more with mood and layered instrumentation. Speaking about the song in a 2011 interview, the album's producer Bob Rock explained that it's all about a mood, which is very cinematic in feel. Metallica know how to play to their strengths, dishing out raw power, but on this song, we went for more of an atmosphere. It's ominous and it works. So I think the B-Bender plays a role in creating that atmosphere. As opposed to the typical way we're used to hearing it used in country music, it's effective in helping create this droning unison bend. Alright, next on the list, I had to include a song from the Inventors of the B-Bender with the Birds live version of You Ain't Going Nowhere. So this is another Dylan song that the Birds covered along with hits like My Back Pages and Mr. Tambourine Man, which saw the band take a beautifully written song and add their own unique flavor to it. On the original studio recording, the main hooks were played on pedal steel, but when the band played the song live, Clarence White used a B-Bender to replicate the licks. <laughs> Alright, in the third spot, we have the Eagles with Peaceful Easy Feeling. The song appeared on the Eagles' 1972 self-titled debut album. Although the Eagles made the song a hit, it was actually written by an LA-based songwriter named Jack Tempchin, who befriended Glenn Frey and asked him to work on the tune. While well, Joe Walsh is usually the man that comes to mind when you think about the Eagles' great lead playing, all the B-Bender lead work in this song was played by the band's original guitarist, Bernie Leadon, who famously quit the band in 1978 by pouring a beer over Glenn Fry's head. You don't mess with Bernie. I'd say the Eagles are as much a country band as a rock band, so this entry kind of blurs the lines a bit, but nonetheless, some really great B-Bender work throughout the entire song. Now, the Eagles are notorious YouTube blockers, 
So if you're watching this in the future and there's no music here, you'll know why. But here goes. All right, at number two, we have one of my favorite Led Zeppelin songs, 10 Years Gone. The song originally appeared on Zeppelin's 1975 double album, Physical Graffiti, but it's only when the, when the band played the song live that Jimmy Page decided to incorporate the B-Bender into it. Page originally intended the song to be an instrumental, but Robert Plant took the piece and wrote lyrics about a relationship he had during the formative years of Zeppelin. Now the live version was also notable for John Paul Jones' use of his triple neck guitar. So it's reported that Jimmy Page recorded 14 layers of guitar overdubs on the original recording. So I guess the triple neck was necessary? Alright, and for my number one pick, I'm going with Metallica's The Unforgiven 2. So the song was released on Metallica's 1997 record Reload and was essentially a sequel to The Unforgiven from the Black Album. Both songs have similar musical themes. The chord progression during the verses is very similar to the one used in the chorus on The Unforgiven, but with one major change. Hetfield uses the old B-Bender on it. The band only played the song once in the 90s at the Billboard Music Awards, where you can see Hetfield playing a 52 reissue Telecaster with a B-Bender. Now, this is a, a bit of a notorious live performance in Metallica history, as lead guitarist Kirk Hammett played some pretty cringy wrong notes over the main riff. After that performance, the band retired the song from their live sets for a long time, only playing it again 18 years later in 2015. And unfortunately, without that sweet, sweet B-Bender. Alright, so there's my list. Although I kept it primarily in the rock world, there are so many great players I could have included. Albert Lee, Marty Stewart, Bob Woodford, Al Perkins, Brad Paisley, and Will Ray are just a few other brilliant players that made some incredible music with the B-Bender. So I'm sure your list would be a little different than mine. Maybe you wouldn't have two Metallica songs on it, so go ahead and comment below and let me know who your favorite B-Bender players are and some of the best songs that feature this very cool little accessory. If you have ideas for topics you'd like to see me cover in future videos, leave those in the comments as well. And if you want to help my channel grow, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.